thank you all for, for coming today. Thank you all for, for this opportunity for the organizers. And thank you to the Linux Foundation for making this happen. Um, so my name is Daniel Izquierdo. And as, uh, thank you, uh, Anna, for the introduction. I'm currently holding the position, well, recently appointed as CEO of, of Viterja and uh, part of a couple of communities, Chaos and, and, and the Inner Source Commons as well. Um, so today, this is more like an open conversation about the, um, you know, there are different ways of measuring success uh, and in, in, from the OSPO perspective, from the OSPO point of view, and in open source in general. And this is more like an open discussion with you. I mean, so indeed, if, if you have any question while I'm giving the talk, feel free to interrupt me and, and we, can, we can have this discussion. Um, so this was me basically when uh, the organizers said, hey, you have this slot for today. So I said, yeah, finally, after one year and a half, it's like in-person meeting. So it's really great to see you all here, all the faces. and you know, hug some people if, if you feel comfortable with. So yeah, uh, so let's start with this. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you for coming. A bit of background for, for today. Um, not historical because all of this is quite recent, but in general, we've been discussing about different flavors of OSPO, right? So we have OSPO++ that uh, we have here, Jacob, if you are, you have further conversations, OSPO universities, governments, and civic institutions. We have uh, OSPOson that recently started uh, fostered by the Eclipse Foundation, like which is a, 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 the OSPO Alliance platform for sharing and promoting world-class materials and good governance for uh, open source program offices. And then, of course, we have the to-do group, which is uh, our host today. So thank you again for, for your time and for your uh, well, people, resources, and, and great organization. And, and well, we, we have uh, great guidelines and websites and, and resources in general. Um, so if we think about OSPO, um, th that's again my personal opinion. So we have like uh, the wall, right, of between indoors and outdoors. And in indoors, uh, basically, this is the everything that happens within the corporation. You know, business as usual. So we have the marketing team, we have developers, uh, we have developers, we have legal, we have well all of these departments. And then outdoors is the rest of the world, right? So there are companies in open source that they are just consuming. So they are simply uh, using the software. They have, of course, their, their risk analysis for the supply chain and everything, and open source is part of this analysis, but they are just consuming software. There are others that are, well, consuming software and then, well, producing, just uh, contributing back in some cases. It doesn't really need to be uh, only software, as we discussed before, right? So maybe it's, it's knowledge, it's uh, resources in terms of events, it's meetups, it's conferences, and this one. Then we have others that are consuming and producing in a similar way, like, well, we are, we are part of an open source community, blah, blah, blah. And then there are others where this line simply doesn't exist. So it's like really transparent, right? So it's like, well, uh, we are working in, uh, in the open in the same way that we are working internally. It comes to my mind, for instance, the folks of GitLab, that they have even the GitLab handbook with, with where everything is there, the strategy, marketing, et cetera, et cetera, is there, it's public. So, is how they are working and everything is of this is public, right? So there, there is no such line in terms of saying, does it make sense to have an OSPO in GitLab? Maybe they have, I don't know, but probably it doesn't make sense. It's like, this is, this is not a wall we want to have between developers and, and the rest of the world. Um, of course, there are, there are a lot of things you can do outdoors or you can do indoors, right? So if we can think about the, the, the goal of an OSPO outdoors, we can think of Reputation, uh, talent attraction, you know, uh, use perhaps other type of tools. This uh, open source communities might be a good place to, uh, to look for innovation, to, 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 to learn from others, to have some common place where you can discuss about other technologies and things. In reality, it's about being cost effective. And there are other things, of course. And then if you think about indoors, so what are the services that an OSPO is providing? And somehow we can think of, well, this is a central place to organize all of the open source related things. So this is about licenses, this is about training, advice, you know, a lot of things that we, we see, for instance, in the previous, in the previous uh, presentation. Thank you, by the way. Um, it's about creating workflows so people feel safe uh, to contribute and consume open source. And people means any of the departments, so we need to talk to lawyers probably, right? So lawyers need to feel comfortable with, with this process, consuming and using so open source. We need to talk to, uh, to middle managers, we need to talk to product owners, we need to, uh, to talk to business people, right? So all of them need to be aware that this is happening. So all of this is part of the OSPO. So 
This is basically what we are doing. And then it's, it's, bas it's about uh, fostering this open source culture that we were discussing, maybe with, uh, through inner source, maybe directly uh, moving people to the, to the open with certain training, to, uh, to, to work in the open. Uh, well, there, there are some other things. So there are, in reality, a lot, of, um, a lot of stuff. I'm going quite quick. It's because I'm between you and the coffee, so that's all. <laughs> so the thing here, um, today's presentation is mainly about discussing metrics uh, or, or how to measure success in, in the case of OSPO. Um, and the question maybe that I have for you is, what is your business goal when you are building an OSPO? So we saw that we have several, several flavors, right? If we, if we think about like an academia, we, have, we think about a university uh, building an OSPO. Well, the goal of university probably is to contribute back to society, uh, to produce knowledge in terms of you know, academic papers and so on. It's about producing um, maybe software that they can contribute. If we think about uh, large organizations, initially with, uh, uh, for profit, then the purpose is a bit different. It's about uh, maybe becoming more attractive to developers. So then there is certain talent attraction, talent world out there, right? So then uh, this is maybe the reason why they are building an OSPO. In some more cases, it's because they started to consume open source. And it's not clear to, to the company how to become a good open source citizen. So th there are several things. And depending on the flavor that we have, uh, maybe if we, if we are a, a, a small company or a medium company, just the concept of having an OSPO is something probably that you cannot even afford, right, from the company perspective. So what, what does it mean for a medium-sized company to be an OSPO? So that's, that's totally different depending on the flavor we, are, we, we want to have in our ice cream, right? Um, if we focus in the, in the case of the to-do group about the goals and, and, and how to measure, uh, well, success and some of the m common things that are part of the guidelines, by the way, so this is, you have here the uh, to-do group.org slash guides slash measuring. We have some goals that were defined as common goals. So this is a really good starting point in the end, uh, indeed. So we have uh, one of them is about being efficient and compliant use of open source software, because compliance is something, uh, uh, something uh, really, really important in, in the case of the OSPO. There are specific uh, discussion around the, the topic of increasing developer uh, productivity, about you know, having, a, having a more homogeneous way of producing software between outdoors and indoors. Uh, this, is a, this is about create and grow open source projects because maybe your company has donated several uh, pieces of software to the outside, maybe to the Linux Foundation or some other foundations. Uh, maybe it's about uh, recruiting or having a proper policy and strategy around retaining developers because developer retention is another hot topic in large corporations as well. It's something to deal with, right? Um, it's about promoting open source culture, is maybe align open source community interest and, and business interest as well. So there are different goals that we can, we can think of. Um, now I'm bringing a uh, disclaimer here. So Viteria, we are providing commercial services. So this is based on, on experiences that I can bring to the discussion today. And these are other goals that we've, uh, we had when we are discussing. And this is, this is part of the initial step that the first time we sit down with someone is like, okay, what of these uh, main goals are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to follow impact? Are you trying to follow to be more open, maybe to grow, maybe to, to have certain influence in the open source ecosystem? It's about uh, being the leader in the, in the communities that matter to you. So what, what is this about, right? And then it's like this card game where we start um, playing cards and then the, the person in front of us say, well, I, I'm really interested in impact. I'm maybe interested in engagement. I'm interested in this and that. And then this is the, the place where we start discussing about, about more things. So uh, what, what I'd like to, to, to say here to, to define it somehow is that there is, uh, th th there is of course, room for improvement. And, and with, with all of us here in this room and everyone in, involved in, in OSPO understanding and, and, and discussing around open source, I think we are a good, uh, great uh, team of folks that we can advance into this understanding. And, 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 and these are simply other point of view that we can bring into, into the discussion beyond, for instance, the, the other common goals that uh, we saw before from the, from the to-do group. So you are an OSPO manager. This is probably your daily life, all, all of your faces, right? So it's like, oh, I'm frustrated today, but then I need, oh, I was happy because someone told me this. Then I don't understand you. I don't get, I don't have the time. And well, there are several faces, right, of you probably around the day. So um, and why, why I'm telling this? Because we saw before like the OSPO idea of this is my corporation goal. This is what we discussed before, right? 
Now this is about the OSPO manager. So what is your personal goal becoming an OSPO, or an OSPO manager? So first you have your objectives, like maybe you are measured by OKRs or something like this. Um, uh, the thing is that uh, beyond those, probably you have your personal idea, personal career where, where you'd like to be, right? So you have other goals in terms of the open source ecosystem. Maybe become uh, a, um, a familiar face in the, in the open source world, maybe become someone that really want to move forward into the open source way of working within the corporation. So there are, there are different motivations here, right? And you are facing, you are wearing several hats. So uh, probably uh, the hardest one is about having this political background hat, like you need to discuss internally with all of the uh, people around from the different departments just to make some things happen, right? And this is about political hat, but then it's about uh, being a good marketer in some house. So you need to say, this is happening in the corporation, so hey, please join, join us for, for this celebration because we, we donated our first open source project or so. So there are, there are different hats, right? And, and the goals of each of these hats are probably different from the goals of the corporation because you, as open source uh, program manager, maybe don't care that much in the short term about the retention of the developers in the rest of the corporation, but that's probably one of the goals of the corporation in this case. So there are now, we need to balance goals, right? So it's not the same, the people that are kind of executing than the long-term goals of the, of the corporation. So we have two phases here. And then if we do certain recap, we did some intro to open source uh, program offices flavors, so academia, medium-sized companies, large corporations, the open source program office uh, goals itself, like retention, talent attraction, etc the OSPO manager, and then there are other internal stakeholders. Because as you, as you mentioned, uh, so you were, you were discussing like, we don't want them to be part of the OSPO, we want them to be ambassadors, right? So we want them to spread the word around, hey, this is happening, so this is, this is how you should behave in the case of OSPO. And all of these internal stakeholders, they have other motivations. So for instance, if you are a developer advocate, the way you should measure in the success of the OSPO is totally different than the OSPO itself, and it's probably different than the OSPO manager. So these are, this is the concept of this talk about the many phases of measuring OSPO success, because there are many different stakeholders and people around. Um, let's, let's focus a bit on, on each of them. Um, how is the time going? Good time. Um, so we said there are different goals depending on the OSPO you are, academic institutions, maybe large corporations, medium-sized companies totally different and, and of course depending on the vertical you are if you are working in banking as we've seen at the open source strategy forum uh, this last couple of days different goals that if we are talking about logistics or pharmaceutical that's it, that's it. <laughs> they are not they, they are somehow related but not that much related and the, it's totally different if we are thinking about highly regulated environments or not and then uh, well large corporations medium-sized company the OSPO goals uh, of course, the different OSPOs, the different companies, they have different goals. Um, if we think about impact and influence, and we try to make this definition right now, probably we have five, six, ten definitions, right? And this heavily depends as well, and even on your skills. Because if you think about, uh, for instance, my, my, my background is computer science. So if I think about uh, impact, maybe I think about impact in the sense of advancing the product itself, well, maybe the, 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 the piece of software. If we think about marketing, maybe from the marketing perspective, it's about having uh, more community members or more leads to the, to, the, uh, to the community or to the project. If we think from the executive point of view, maybe it's about uh, bringing more people on board or maybe having a faster onboarding process for developers to the company. So impact means definitely totally different. So vocabulary, having a standard set of, of, of nomenclature vocabulary, uh, common verbs, common, common usage is, is key as well. So it's about, you know, uh, raising the, that, that these differences are, are happening and having a clear, you know, a scenario that everyone understands and so on is, is definitely key uh, for the success of the OSPO in this case. Uh, the different hats, we discuss about this and probably for each of the hats you may have different uh, metrics or KPIs, even you may have different point of view, even if we, if we change, right, the, or, or there is a, a change in the, in the OSPO manager, that person will bring will bring a different point of view. And, and this is just different, so the goals will be slightly different probably, right? And then the different stakeholders, so we can think of community managers, developer advocates, business people, right? Product teams, 
marketing. So there are, there are a bunch of people out there that are part of the OSPO ecosystem in somehow, and that we all need to align and work together with a common vision and mission, but all of them are looking for different goals, right? So then they are measuring success in all of these different ways. Good. So let's think about community managers, let's think about business and so on. So this is an example of the CNCF ecosystem. This, this is a two, three years old uh, analysis. So what you see the, the pink dots here, the, the small pink dots around here are developers. And then they, they have contributed to a specific project if there is a, an edge between the dot and the, and the blue square, right? So then it happens that there are developers that have been participating in more than one community. So uh, if we see uh, Kubernetes at the end, there, is, there are several lines uh, linking to other projects. So that means that this developer has been participating in Kubernetes and other projects. Great. So then this is like the, 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 the shape of the CNCF ecosystem in somehow, well, two, three years ago again. Um, so if we think about this from an open source, from the, from the Linux Foundation perspective, probably uh, all of these uh, connections, uh, all of these people around, means success because what they are saying is like the, the whole picture like this is great because because we, we we have built this we have all of these people working together we have all of this company and individuals building something right so it's like everyone is working together in not in a in a chaotic way and and doing this producing cncf which is a really successful ecosystem or, or project um if we think from the uh, community manager perspective Maybe what we are interested in is just in some of the dots, because maybe we are now fostering the idea of, well, we want to really onboard newcomers. So who are the newcomers? So maybe we can color uh, some of the dots as newcomers and linking uh, across, you know, so you may have a newcomer and this newcomer started in, in Kubernetes and then you saw that this newcomer started to talk to, to, to some of the developers and it happens that you know, you know some of them. So then you use those connections as a community manager to reach out to this person and say, hey, welcome to the community. Uh, I know you've been working with this and this person, so hope they, you know, you've, you've had a really good uh, uh, first steps, mentoring or so, and as a community manager, you are trying to do, your goals are different. Just using the same, the same use case, the same analysis or visualization, right? From a, from a foundation perspective, again, maybe if your interest is about having more members, joining the ecosystem, uh, it's, this is really, really great because the more people you have here, the more companies that might be potentially members of the, of the foundation and help advance into the mission of CNCF in this case. So again, depending on the hat and just with the same uh, visualization or kind of metric, you may have different point of view. This means different things for different people, okay? Um, yeah, so some lessons learned. Uh, the existing literature, I would say, is great. So I'm specifically uh, uh, referring to the to-do group guidelines. Uh, there's always room for improvement. I know this is really easy to say and hard to move forward. So uh, this is why I, I, I say, yeah, we, if we see or we agree in that there is this room for improvement, it would be great to work all together, as Anna mentioned at the very beginning, and be able to, you know, across all of the different flavors of OSPO, be able to to build something together to advance into the understanding of usage and adoption and production of open source from a corporate perspective, from academic per perspective and from other ones. Um, and I would say beyond the, the first steps provided by the by the group, this initial discovery phase with the self-reflection, right, about, so these are the important topics we are trying to achieve. So what are your business goals specifically in the corporation? And try to match those business goals in, into specific questions or metrics. That's something to definitely to have further discussion. Because uh, what we've seen in some cases is that people start measuring things for the pleasure of measuring things because they can from a technical perspective. And then you realize that whatever you were measuring is not that aligned with the goal or the business goal that you were following. So now what, right? So have we, have we been wasting our time or so? Well, no, but uh, we need to, to do this matching in somehow. Uh, more things. Business goals are definitely different uh, from project goals. Uh, an example here, if, if you're aware of the, of the chaos community, this is uh, the acronym for Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. It's a Linux Foundation project. Uh, we, are, we are part of it as well. We are contributors. Um, and while chaos is mainly focused on understanding project health and, on, and, and, and certain topics, 
in the case of the to-do group, maybe this is a much more corporate focus, right? So uh, sometimes business does, doesn't really need to be aligned with community or, pre or what, whatever it means for project health, right? So maybe from a business perspective, you are interested in being the technical leader of that com community, being the, uh, the really, uh, have really great influence in the project. From a project health perspective, having a more diverse set of, uh, you know, individuals or companies might be better than the other approach. So sometimes this balance is, is, is hard to have. Um, more things. Uh, I have the feeling that the current guidelines are not that focused on medium enterprises um, just because of the resources. So a large corporation can afford definitely to have, you know, different people. For instance, what, what we saw before, like the team, we have a team of six, seven people, not full time, but working together, right? And, and with, with a common mission, maybe from a medium sized enterprise or small enterprise, is harder. So what are the next, the first steps for a small company willing to use or produce software in a safe way? So that's something probably to discuss from the OSPO perspective as well. Um, and then from a metrics perspective, I would say, and this is, this is a usual sentence, right? The whole is, the, is greater than the sum of, the, of its parts. And specifically what I mean with this is that uh, some of the metrics that we see in the to-do group are mainly focused on, on, on one type of contribution, one type of data source, for instance, like number of commits or number of pull requests or number of issues. But if we aggregate everything, so all of the data source into one place, then you can start thinking about contributors. And it's not a contributor focused on Git repositories or in issues or pull requests. It's a contributor that is participating across all of the data sources that are part of the project. And probably from, from the perspective of the, of the participant and bringing newcomers to the community, that, that definition of contributor is, is the key one instead of focusing just on one of the you know, parts. Um, and then another, another thing is, uh, um, from an open source perspective, probably a lesson learned or recommendation is trust the tools in your supply chain that you can definitely check. So the recommendation would be, if you are making specific decisions on data, be sure that you understand the technology that is behind this data. And for this, I would say chaos is a really good place that you can you can learn from because all of the knowledge and tools are specifically open source. There are other solutions out there. Uh, they are not perhaps uh, open source. So think of uh, the kind of data that you are using to make decisions because, well, definitely if those tools are open source, this is something that you can track and you can trace in somehow the data. So how the data is being provided to you. So how, how you are gathering and enriching and visualizing that information. So it's something that you can trace over time because you are going to make, from an OSPO perspective, big decisions based on data. So at least be sure that the data is, is something that you can trace in somehow. Either maybe you are uh, developing this internally so that you have access to the code. So that, that would be uh, inner source in this case or internal open code, we can say. But um, well, some, some, some comments here that we can discuss later. Um, definitely, just as a, as a way of finishing today, so you are not alone. Remember, we have OSPO++, we have OSPO Zone, we have the to-do group, uh, we have this meeting, so we can all discuss together. Um, in addition to this, uh, I, I wanted to bring three specific um, communities, which is Chaos uh, 1 of 10, that uh, uh, chaos.community, the URL, or Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. Uh, it works for inner source as well. Most of the cases, you just need to make certain translations. Basically, the metrics works. Uh, what doesn't work are the, are the goals. Uh, then specifically, Grimoire Lab, we'll see now some, some examples. Um, and then uh, the idea is, well, this is a free open source tool. And then inner source commons that we have our summit, by the way, on the 17th of November. So you are more than welcome to join. The, unfortunately, the call, the call for papers already closed. But if you are interested in, in being part of a breakout session, lead, lead some of them, would be great. So let's discuss later. Um, specifically in the case of Grimoire Lab, there are some uh, use cases out of the box. In, if you, in case you are interested, I'll go through them really quick because Anna is looking at the, at the time now. Contributors growth, this, this idea of contributors, you can so think of in, with a big picture this is the evolution of the contributors over time. So then you can check the, uh, for, it, for all of the data sources, Slack channels, GitHub, uh, maybe you, have, you are using GitLab. From an OSPO perspective, probably you have an interest in, in, in different projects coming from different data sources 
and from different open source foundations. So all of, the, all of these think of having one place, centralized place where you have all of these insights in somehow. Attraction and retention rate, demographics, the retention for how long are the developers retain in the project, how are the new, uh, the new uh, comers joining the project, how fast, and et cetera, et cetera. Software life cycle, so what are the projects, what are the most important in terms of uh, contributions and contributors. So there are a bunch of use cases that you can go into Grimoire Lab um, and check this. There is another project, by the way, uh, it's called Ogor. Ogor is, is mostly focused on, so it has a narrower uh, bunch of data sources, but, but adding a machine learning interface, uh, as far as I remember, maybe Don, you can correct me. Um, um, then a bit about Viteria, so disclaimer, we provide uh, commercial services, of course, we help uh, build your open source uh, uh, program office, let's say as a service, so we build the house for you and then we train and give you the tools, the knowledge um, and everything for you, so you, uh, after a year, a couple of years, well, basically you have, you have the OSPO or you have the inner source program office. Um, yeah, this is me, thank you for your time and any question, I'm here. Thank you. Okay, so we are a bit out of time, so we might have like one or two questions, and then uh, I think uh, Daniel can answer to them during the coffee break. There's coffee now, so we yeah. can discuss there if you want. Yeah, yeah. question. Um, so, well, this is, this is uh, so the question is, I, I'll repeat the question, if, if we can measure uh, kind of the different hats in one place or the different roles in one place and somehow, so, uh, I would say the answer is mainly, uh, might, we can simplify this to a technical discussion, which is if, if, the, if the tool allows this. In the case of the tool uh, that we are using, in this case, Grimoire Lab, um, uh, the thing is, uh, you, you can have several dashboards. And then for each of the dashboards, when basically you can have a, a menu that you can navigate or so. And depending on the, on the goal that you are trying to achieve in each of the cases, you can build a dashboard for each of them. Um, so the, the tool itself, it's uh, out of the box, provides like 70 plus different dashboards, which are dif 70 plus different use cases. Can we have everything in one place? Yeah, the answer initially is yes, it's positive. That depends if maybe if you want to restrict access to some of the roles or how you'd like to, to proceed in, in that way. But initially the answer is yes, you can. More questions? No? Who's for coffee? 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 <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>